another week of football, ladies and gentlemen. What is going on? Thank you guys for clicking on the video. Before I get into this, I need you guys to hit that subscribe and that like button, please. It is all appreciated. It helps out the channel so much. Now let's dive into the matchups, man. So we look at week 11. Interesting slate here. I had a pretty decent week last week. I went 10-4. and four. My record is now 152, so I will take it. 100 wins. Um, you know, I, I guess that's not bad for a week 11, uh, you know, I guess checkpoint. 100 wins. So hopefully I can get, you know, I'll get another decent week this week. I think we got, what do we got? I think we got, we got, how many rows are there? We got a good 14 matchups here, so hopefully another, like, you know, 11, maybe this time 11, 12 wins. I'd take that, at, you know, no doubt. Um, but, you know, anyway, let's dive into the matchups, and I'll tell you who I think wins and why. Starting off with Thursday Night Football, we got the Washington Commanders at the Philadelphia Eagles. Let's take a look at the Eagles. They dominated the Dallas Cowboys. Uh, they showed why they're one of the best teams in the NFC. I mean... Straight up. Jalen Hurts, he took five sacks, but he was able to throw for four touchdowns, four total touchdowns. And the Eagles defense just smothered Dallas without Dak Prescott. And I just think that they're too ready for anybody in this division. Uh, then the Commanders last week, they had, a, they had a rough game against the Pittsburgh Steelers. I mean, they played sloppy. I know the game was, it was a one-point game, but Jaden Daniels, he was completely overwhelmed by that Pittsburgh defense, especially in the fourth. And they were able to only get 16 yards of total offense. I mean, that was that's just in the fourth quarter. That's ridiculous. Uh, but if you had trouble with the Steelers, I just think the Eagles' defense is going to be a nightmare. Because I think the Eagles' defense, um, right now they have a little little bit of an upper hand over the Steelers. Uh, but not, not, not by a landslide, but by a little bit. And plus it's a divisional game. So I think the Eagles, they kind of know Jalen Hurts and where he's at. It's hard to see him go out at home like this. I'm going to take the Eagles to get a win here on Thursday Night Football. Uh, it's hard to see, Like I said, it's just hard to see them losing You know this matchup. The Washington Commanders, they're 0-3 against teams above 500. So I guess if you want to call them a little bit fraudulent, I guess you can. Um, I think it's just more of like a late, like a late season, a little bit. Not, not collapse, but a little. They peaked maybe a little bit too early. So I'm going to go with Philadelphia here. Moving on to the Sunday games. We got the Las Vegas Raiders at the Miami Dolphins. Dolphins, they come off a Monday night win over the Los Angeles Rams in Week 10. They look pretty good on both sides. Uh, the defense was absolutely relentless. I mean, they sacked Stafford four times, and uh, the Rams' offense just couldn't get anything going. I mean, Calais Campbell, he was a huge standout as well. Tua had a you know a rough couple turnovers early in his return, or as like a you know second return back, but I mean, he made it up with pretty much almost a perfect second half. I mean. Then you look at the Raiders. They're just in a bad spot here. They fired their offensive staff, like, completely. And they've just been one of the least productive offenses in the league. And Miami's defense, yeah, they're playing at a high level. Two is finding his rhythm. I don't really see a reason to pick against them. I'm going to go Miami on this one. I think Las Vegas is just heading downhill. And uh, I don't. I think the Dolphins are just, they have a chance. You know, like Tua said, he loves their chances. I think that they're motivated and driven to get some wins lined up. I'm going to go Miami on this one. Next up, we got an interesting one here in the bad way, I guess. We got the Cleveland Browns taking on the New Orleans Saints at the Superdome. So the Browns had a pretty disappointing game before the bye against the Baltimore Ravens. Or not the Ravens, sorry, the Chargers. Uh, they made some really bad mistakes. And their offense is just kind of shaky, especially with Jameis Winston at quarterback. You know, he just couldn't get anything going against the Chargers. And the defense, they, they've been, they're strong, but they haven't been able to carry the team on its own. I mean, when the offense isn't generating enough points, it's just not, it's not sufficeable for the defense to just like, you know, roll out there every, you know, few minutes. They're going to get tired. Uh, but then the Saints, they just broke a seven game losing streak, beating the Atlanta Falcons. Uh, their offense came alive. Uh, Alvin Kamara helped the offense a little bit and playing at the home or at the dome. I want to pick New Orleans. Don't get me wrong. But, you know, Winston, he if he's starting, I mean, it's his quote-unquote homecoming, and I just have a sneaky feeling he's going to play well. And that means if he plays well and the offense plays well, the defense is only going to get more rest. And Cleveland definitely has some of the talent on defense uh, to match up with this New Orleans team. And that's why I'm actually, much to my dismay, going with the Cleveland Browns to win this one. 
I think that they just come into this game a little bit, not the better team, but they just come into this game a little bit of an upper hand in my opinion. So I'm actually going to go with the Cleveland Browns to beat the New Orleans Saints. Next up, we got the Indianapolis Colts at the New York Jets. So we look at the we look at the Colts. They, I mean, they they threw a pick six early on. Joe Flacco he turned the ball over four times, and they just couldn't keep up with the Bills. Um, it got a little bit close towards the end there, but his play has just been pretty shaky. And then the Jets they did not look great last week either. You know, against the Arizona Cardinals, but their defense has been pretty solid. And I think that that defense can actually generate some pressure on Joe Flacco and make him off his game again. And you know, I don't know Aaron Rodgers like injury how severe it is right now. Uh, but, you know, I'm going to give them a slight advantage here in a low-scoring contest and actually pick the Jets to upset the Colts. I need an upset of the week. I was thinking about another game, but I'm going to go with this one. Jets are at home. You know, they just beat the Texans, you know, two weeks ago, you know, in the same, you know, stadium. But I think that they get the job done here over the Colts. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm going to pick the Jets. Next up, we got a pretty easy one here. We got the Minnesota Vikings taking on the Tennessee Titans. So the Vikings... Sam Donald, he threw three interceptions, um, but they, you know, the defense just was able to slow down Jacksonville predictably, and then the Titans, they're just not able to protect their quarterback. <laughs> I mean, he took seven sacks against the Chargers, and Tennessee's offensive line is just not giving Will Levis any time, and they're, that Vikings defense should be able to capitalize and make Will Levis uncomfortable again, and if Donald can limit some of the mistakes he made last week, I think that they can win this one by a landslide. Um, I don't think it's going to be a landslide. I think it'll be a semi-competitive game, but I'm going to go with the Minnesota Vikings to get an, a pretty pretty convincing win here over the Tennessee Titans. I would say this is my rivalry game of the week, you know, just because it has the most history. But we got the Green Bay Packers at the Chicago Bears. The Bears are in horrible shape. They haven't scored a touchdown in their last 23 possessions, and their offense has just been one of the worst with the league, worse in the league, and guess who's at the helm? Caleb Williams. Not sold on him, by the way. I don't think he's a good quarterback, and, you know, we'll just see what happens. But he he had a decent stretch there. It just looks like it's all coming apart. And especially against that, ever since that Hail Mary against Washington, the Bears have just completely lost their momentum in their, or their lack thereof that they had at the time. But they just lost whatever little momentum they did have. Uh, but the Packers, I mean, they came, they're, they're, they're off the bye. They're coming off to reset after a tough loss to the Detroit Lions. Uh, but they're expected to come out sharper. Jordan Love should be better, and that was just awful weather in Green Bay in that Lions game. And Chicago, they look like a team that's just completely given up at this point. I mean, they got, like, three points against the New England Patriots. And, you know, the Patriots, I mean, Drake May, he didn't have the greatest game in the world, but the defense struggled a little bit with him. And I think Jordan Love should be able to take advantage of that. I'm going Packers on this one. And Packers, they just seem to own the Bears you know, for a long, long, long time, and I see no reason why that should change. Give me the Packers in this one. Easy one here. We got the Jacksonville Jaguars taking on the Detroit Lions. The Lions are one of the hottest teams in the league. Jacksonville is just steamrolling without Trevor, or getting steamrolled, um, and, you know, without Trevor Lawrence, I don't see how, you know, they beat this Lions team. Four field's going to be rocking. Lions momentum coming off a comeback win against the Texans. To keep this short, Lions are my lock of the week. Easy. Detroit's defense should step up in the second half. Uh, just like they did in the Houston game. They held the Texans scoreless. So, Lions in an easy landslide here. Next up, we got one that I actually went back and forth on. We got the New England Patriots hosting the Los Angeles Rams. So, the Rams, they had a tough they had a tough game against the Miami Dolphins. Stafford got pressured all night. The offense couldn't convert on third down. And the Patriots' defense is actually on a roll here. So, I think they have a good shot to upset the Rams. And, you know... But the Rams are still a good team. You know, they got Cooper Cup and Puka Nakua now. I think they should be able to just insert their way slowly back in coming off injury. Um, By a hair right now, I'm going to go with the Los Angeles Rams. I think that they have the opportunity, like a major, 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 they're a major danger. I put them on my most dangerous list to get upset just because I think New England, you know, they're only two games out of a playoff spot. So, you know, Drake May is, he could only get better and better and better. We can only see. Uh, but this one, I'm actually going to go with the Rams uh, just by a little bit. But I went so back and forth on this one. But I'm picking LA. Next up, we got an AFC North rivalry for the ages. Two teams that just do not like each other at all. We got the Baltimore Ravens at the Pittsburgh Steelers. 
So the Baltimore Ravens, they're coming off a comeback win over us. Lamar Jackson threw for three touchdowns in the fourth quarter alone. He looks like he's back in MVP form already. The Ravens offense is just rolling right now. The Steelers are also showing why they're tough to beat, especially with Russell Wilson at the helm. I mean, he's undefeated, and they came they came back from against the Commanders. I mean, the defense shut down the Commanders, and especially in the fourth quarter. I hate to say it, but the Steelers, they do look like a, a pretty legit playoff team. I mean, this is not a team I was, I'm was. i waiting for their collapse. I'm still waiting for their collapse, but, you know, they, they look like a legit playoff team. I'm not saying they're like a legit Super Bowl team yet, but right now, they look like they can definitely make a run for this division, along with the Baltimore Ravens. Uh, but the Steelers and the Ravens always have good games. I know the Steelers have owned them in recent years. I mean, I think they're 7-1 and one in their last eight matchups against them. The Steelers have a good track record against Baltimore. I'm not going to lie. I mean, everybody, any neutral fan, I guess, would look at this game and say, like, oh, the Ravens. I mean, they, they have the MVP the reigning MVP, probably going to be two-time MVP after, two-time back-to-back MVP, three-time MVP after this year if Lamar keeps it up. Pittsburgh and Baltimore, they're, I feel like if Lamar is healthy, if, you know, they can remain healthy, the Steelers can also remain healthy. I think this game can go either way. It doesn't matter the record between these two teams. Um, the Steelers have a good track record against Baltimore, especially in Pittsburgh, under Mike Tomlin, that is. And, you know, Pittsburgh's got a, they got a quarterback now, and Ravens' pass defense has been a little bit suspect, um, you know, especially against us. I mean, yeah, not every team has Joe Burrow, Jamar Chase, but Russell Wilson isn't slouching either. He's not, I don't think he's what he used to be, but he's still, he can still be very serviceable. And I think, I, he didn't have the greatest game in the world last week, but, you know, he did, he made some, he made some excellent throws, so... I'm actually going to go with the Pittsburgh Steelers here. It's like a one in doubt go home team. And I think both these teams are going to end up splitting. You know, I'm going to think, I think each team wins at home. Um, but yeah, I'm going with the Steelers on this one to improve to eight and two. Blech, that actually, that's disgusting to say. Uh, but to both these teams, regardless of, you know, how bad we are or how good you are, screw both of you, as always. Moving on. Next up, we got another divisional matchup, though. We got the Seattle Seahawks taking on the San Francisco 49ers. The 49ers are getting Christian McCaffrey back, and he made an immediate impact. I mean, he loved, he he helped them rack up, I don't know how many yards, but he added a new dynamic to that offense, man. Brock Purdy had his best passing game of the season because of the unpredictability play-calling-wise, and the 49ers are looking like one of the toughest teams in the NFC. I'm not going to lie. I think that... Seattle's been solid, but they just, I don't think their firepower is enough to match San Francisco. But I do think it's a divisional game, so Seattle should be able to keep it close. And I think Seattle covers the spread here, but I think the Niners win 27 24 here. I think Geno Smith remains in check, but he has a decent game against his 49ers defense because he knows his team now, you know, having been here for, you know, his third year. I think he knows his team. I think that both these teams know each other, obviously, super well. So I think it'll be a good game, but I'm going to go with uh, San Francisco to win, but Seattle to cover. Next up from the Mile High City, we got the Atlanta Falcons taking on the Denver Broncos. The Broncos' heartbreaking loss to the Kansas City Chiefs. I actually was happy that that happened because that raised our playoff hopes. But a blocked field goal ended up costing them the game. And they almost upset Kansas City, but Denver's defense has been very strong. And they should be able to, you know, pressure uh, Kirk Cousins. He's struggled under pressure, don't get me wrong. But, you know, Young Hoku has missed a lot of crucial field goals. He's kind of reminding me on that Evan, Evan McPherson, you know, kind of track. Uh, but, you know, I don't think... Uh, what's his name? I'm not, I, I completely blanked out, but... Yeah, Kirk Cousins, sorry, I don't know why I blanked out there, but he he struggled under pressure, don't get me wrong, but the Broncos have not looked like a good team. I know they almost beat Kansas City, but that's a divisional game. They know each other well, like I said. You know, that's how divisional games go. Uh, But it's just tough for me to think that Atlanta's just going to slip, even after that loss they had last week to New Orleans. Yeah, they're having, they're having, they're just having a lot of, they're both having a lot of problems. And Bo Nix, I mean, didn't look great last week, but he just almost did enough to win. I usually am a win and doubt go home team, but no, I'm actually going to give the edge to the Falcons here. Uh, I think Kirk Cousins bounces back. I think, you know, 
I might, I mean, this is actually a tough one, tougher than you might think, but Atlanta just looks like a team that just is trying to bounce back at this point. I don't, I just don't, I don't know what them, or the Broncos, to be honest with you, but yeah, the Broncos, I mean, they, they, both these teams are not horrible, but I don't think it's going to be, you know, the greatest game in the world. Give me the Falcons, though. Next up, I would probably choose this as the game of the week, if I'm being honest with you. We got the Kansas City Chiefs at the Buffalo Bills. So the Bills had a pretty good defensive showing against the Colts. They picked off Joe Flacco three times. He had a pick six as well, but Josh Allen has been turnover prone. I'm sorry, but, you know, that Bills defense is just playing at a high level. You know, they're they're nearly unbeatable at home. Um, you know, Kansas City, like I said, they got a narrow victory against Denver last week, but they needed a block field goal. But, you know, that is a divisional game. But Mahomes is a threat to the Bills in the playoffs. In the regular season, Buffalo actually does give them a good, great, great game. And they actually end up coming on top. So, while Mahomes is and, and the Chiefs are actually a threat, Buffalo's defense in a tough atmosphere, I think this is an opportunity for both teams. You know, the Chiefs, a lot of people are saying they're the worst undefeated team ever, blah, blah, blah. If they win this game, they can really show that they're legit. I think they have incredible motivation to show that they're legit. But Buffalo, their defense should give them an edge here in what could be a playoff atmosphere. So I'm actually going to go with the Buffalo Bills to get a home win here. You know, to prove it, uh, they're going to be 9-2, I believe. So, you know, something to you know, tip, tip your hat to Buffalo, man. They, you know, they have struggled a little bit, you know, in recent weeks, but... At the end of the day, they're bouncing back, and that's what's important. In Kansas City, I think that they they really want to prove that this is a game that they should prove, I guess, that they're legit. Uh, but this one, I'm actually going to go with Buffalo. So they're going to knock off the undefeated Chiefs. Next up, we got Sunday Night Football. We got the Cincinnati Bengals taking on the Los Angeles Chargers. So we look at the Bengals. Last week's loss against the Ravens was brutal. We had a 21-7 lead, and the defense just completely collapsed in the second half, especially the fourth quarter. The Ravens marched all over them. They got a total of 230 yards and three touchdowns. It's kind of like just deja vu with this team and their defense just finding new ways to lose against the Ravens. I mean, the same thing happened in Week 5. And, you know, Burrow, Joe Burrow went off for 428 passing yards, four touchdowns, Jamar Chase was an absolute monster. He got 264 total yards. He had two or three touchdowns, I believe. And the offense just did its part. Uh, but those some questionable three deep throws on third and fourth down, I just did not like those play calls. I get the desire to go like for it. Don't get me wrong, but how are you not gonna how are you just gonna feed Jermaine Burton twice on deep goal balls? That just doesn't make sense to me. Uh but you know I in crunch time, we need smart football, not not reckless football, and that's what we did. But Chase Brown's fumble just completely shifted the momentum. You know, you look at that play, anybody who watched the full game, that fumble completely changed, like, the momentum of the game. I mean, the Ravens got a touchdown immediately after, and the momentum just completely sunk. I mean, the Bengals were about to go down maybe for a potential 28-7 lead, but that fumble just did not help. It shifted the momentum, and the Ravens just were able to capitalize because that's what good teams do. But... Now it's time to look forward, and this Chargers game is an absolute must-win. If Cincinnati wants any shot at salvaging the playoffs and salvaging the season. But they've showed a lot of vulnerability against high-powered offenses. And that, I mean, the Bengals' offense is just like that, especially with, you know, Burrow, Chase. They, they look in sync. The offensive line has been kind of iffy recently, but they're getting some dudes back. But if they can protect Joe... And, you know, give him a chance to make his plays like they did last week. And there was a roughing call that wasn't called. It wasn't just the pass interference and the, the holding that, or the face mask that wasn't called. It was also, there was also a roughing the passer that should have been called. But, you know, they have the weapons that exposed some weaknesses in that Chargers secondary. But the Chargers have actually not faced an offense as, as dynamic as us. But their defense has been coming to play recently, in recent weeks. But if the offensive line, they can protect Joe, give him a chance to make plays, I see no reason why they can't win this game. Especially if the defense can kind of step up at clutch time. If they can, 
You know, the Ravens, they got a three. At the end of the day, they got a two time MVP in Lamar Jackson. You're not going to find those all the time. And Justin Herbert is no slouch either. Don't get me wrong, but they have not faced an offense as this dynamic. But this one's going to be a fight. And I'm not happy with this organization right now because just how they've addressed the needs or the lack thereof addressing the needs. But I'm trusting that Joe and the offense will show up big. The defense will finally come through and they are competing with. Honestly, the Chargers even, but the Colts, the Broncos, I just trust that they're going to come out, and it's all about pride at this point. The Bengals fans, much like myself, they're, we're tired of seeing this team fall short when it matters most. And this is the chance to right the ship, one of the last chance to right the, sh- right the ship. Knowing that this is a make-or-break game for the Bengals, and they need this win much more than the Chargers do at this point, I'm going to pick us to win with just the expectation you should win because it's your last chance heading into the bye week you do not want to go four and seven and there's no such thing as kind of like losing like if we lose this if we lose this then technically we can still make it all that no this is a must win so i'm going to trust that we do that in this one so i'm unhappy with the organization but i'm just going to trust that we go out and we get the job done he shouldn't say anything bad about passion all right, well, I'm going to say something bad about Texas right now. I'm not going to lie to you. Both these teams are in, like, completely, like, just, they just struggled the last two weeks. More specifically, the Dallas Cowboys. The Cowboys are in complete free fall. I mean, they got four straight losses. The offense looks absolutely miserable without Dak Prescott. Cooper Rush or Trey Lance are going to be under center. I'm not sure who. They had a weird thing. Like, Trey Lance came in for two plays, and then Cooper Rush was, like, in there, and then he fumbled, like, two plays. It was just a weird thing to watch. Uh, but they're going to rely heavily on their defense in this one. But the Texans, they've been inconsistent. Like, they, they, they blew a big lead against Detroit, and they lost the Jets on Thursday night. So I feel for the Texans. I mean, coming off a Thursday night loss, I mean, I'm still, like, we're still waiting. You know, it's like we we lost last Thursday, and we're still waiting till Sunday to, you know, get to make up for it. Texans, they lost on Thursday, then they lost on Sunday. That's just got to be painful for the Houston Texans. But... In the Battle of Texas, you know, the Texans have been inconsistent as well. I mean, they showed some strong flashes. C.J. Stroud actually did have a decent game last week, but he just kind of, he just struggled a little bit in the second half. And the offensive line did not play great in the second half. They gave him actually good protection in the first. But Cowboys are just in complete free fall mode. And in this all-Texas matchup, I'm just going to pick the team that just looks better. I'm going with the Houston Texans on this one. You know, I, I think both these teams are definitely not where they should be. Especially, I mean, the Cowboys, I guess they have a like kind of an excuse with Dak out for the season. But even Dak was not playing, you know, great football. But the Texans, I mean, I think it's just their opportunity to bounce back, improve to 7-4 and four on the season. I'll say they do it here, and they get a win here over the Cowboys. I think it'll be semi-competitive, like, you know, just like I said, some of the other games. But, you know, I think the Texans, they just, they're just hungry for a win here at this point. But... Yeah, I'm going to go Houston on this one. And that's going to wrap up these picks, guys. Thank you guys for clicking on. I really appreciate it. You guys have a great one. Let's have another great week of football. Hopefully, I have a better week of football with my team winning on Sunday Night Football. But you guys have a great one, and I'll see you guys next time. Subscribe, comment, like, and have a good day, everybody.